Hi everyone, it's Eric from eclartman12.blogspot.com and welcome to my full review of the Apple iPhone 5. Now, I must start off by giving a big thank you to Vodafone.co.uk for sending me this handset over to review. You can purchase this particular 32GB iPhone 5 in white for £89 and then you're on a contract that will be £47 a month. Now, let's get on with the review. Now, I would just like to say that this is the very first iPhone I have had in to experience. This is the very first iPhone I've been using as my daily phone, and I'll be in this video letting you know what I think. Now, let's first off with the bad aspect. Now, as you can see, Apple have made the screen size bigger. It was originally 3.5 inches, and now it is 4 inches. Now, that is all nice and good, but the downside is that the screen is only taller. If you've seen many other sort of smartphones that I've reviewed previously, like the Sony Xperia T, and even back all the way to the, original, to the original Samsung Galaxy S, the screens were taller and wider as well. This is just taller, and therefore it's, it's given it a 60 by 9 aspect ratio, which is great, but for viewing back video, it just seems like an incomplete experience if you're coming from all those other Android phones I've been using that have had a larger screen. So I'd have liked if Apple have given this a slightly bigger screen and made it wider as well as taller. The other thing I don't like is the App Store. Now I'm pretty much sure all saw this coming, except I've got one other complaint. The experience for searching be searching between apps is horrible. Now as you can see they've changed the App Store, they've revised it. You've got some nice editor's choice at the top over here. And you've got some uh, sort of categories to go, on over, go over there. What's hot, some great uh, applications that they're showing you here and then the various other bits and pieces over there. Now the downside is, if I go into search, this is the main one, say if I'm searching for something like Google, I want to look for a Google application, let's say I want to look for the Google Authenticator app. Now as you can see, there's this is uh, the first result out of 1,567, so I've got a lot of stuff to individually scroll between. Now there's many other interesting apps here, like Google Chrome, Google Plus, Google Earth, Google Drive, Translate, the YouTube app, and oh, even Google Currents is here. Now let's say I'm still looking for the Google Authenticator, but that Google Currents app you saw there. Uh, well, if, well, if I said okay, I want to come back to that soon. So let's still look for Google Authenticator. I'm still looking. Oh, Flipboard as well. You know, it's like this is natural. The natural sort of uh, reaction you'd have when you see these different sort of apps that, you, that might catch your interest. Google Authenticator. Now I have it installed, as you can see. Now. I'd, inst I'd go into this, I would install it, but now say I want to go back to that Google Currents. I'm on, th I'm on the results, page 30. Now, I'm going to have to go all the way back in order to find Google Currents again, individually. And there it is. Do you see how much swipes I had to do there? That was 20 swipes I had to do just to go back to the uh, Google Currents app. Unacceptable. This is a horrible experience. Just at the end, if, uh, there's some re uh, results I'm actually looking for that actually are like tens and tens of pages uh, up to up to the right, and then I come all the way back, and I'm looking for the uh, uh, app that I'm looking for. And it, it, all it does is makes my wrist get tired by the time you know I keep going like this every single time constantly. I don't like that. They should have kept the app stores to how they did it before. If they wanted to revise it, they could have done some incremental up uh, incremental revisements, but it wasn't necessary for this. This would probably work good with the iPad, but for the iPhone, I'm, what looking at one app in Individually, no, no, this does not work at all. And this has sort of made my experience not very enjoyable. Another thing which has made my experience not very enjoyable, and I'm pretty sure you all know about this one, is when iOS 6 was pushed to the uh, iPhones, particularly the iPhone 5, installing applications has been a problem. Now, I have not experienced it as much as many other people have, but many people always say that when they update apps, install apps, there's many failed downloads, and it does not complete the download. This is really irritating for me. I do not like the fact that it keeps doing this. It's really irritating me a lot. And when it comes down to installing a lot of other apps, like games and stuff that are obviously much bigger applications, it takes ages. There's this one case where I was actually downloading an application uh, in the evening, and say about 6 o'clock I was downloading it, and up until about 10, 11 o'clock it's still doing it. So I waited overnight, and overnight it did complete the download, but it took too long. So... And that, that, that was surprising because I actually installed another application which was actually bigger than the one that took uh, all night and that uh, installed faster. Why on earth is this happening? It's very, very confusing, very, very strange and the overall experience is just inconsistent on the App Store. So something Apple should fix with a system update. So that was one of the problems right there. Now, the next thing I don't like is the lightning connector. Now, as you can see, the lightning connector is right here and it's, I, I'm going to tell you, I thought that so when you stick the lightning connector in, 
in both ways. I thought it was a lazy man's job. I thought it would be like whoop de doo which in a sense is whoop de doo who cares? But it just makes the things a little, you know, easier. It's like you just take, pick up the charges, connect it, you don't really think, okay, have I got in the right way? It, it just saves you about two seconds, or maybe three seconds, but it's just something that has, uh, you know, sort of flown very nicely. I am amused very easily. So that is all good, but the downside is, is that this lightning connector is bloody expensive. Uh, if you want to use all your previous docks or connectors, you're going to have to get purchase an adapter, which just recently came out. And this adapter will cost you £25. Yep, you heard me right. And with £25, just think what you could get with £25. With £25, you could get those Apple AirPods. For £25, you could get other earphones. For £25, you could have bought another sort of accessory for the iPhone 5. But for £25, you're getting that adapter. It was actually said that that adapter, that uh, you know, 30-pin dot connector to lightning connector, that adapter would actually cost uh, nothing. It, you'd actually get it for free with the handset. That would have been good, but just typical Apple, they want to get as much money from you as they possibly can. And they have been selling it separately. And that is another problem. If they're selling it separately, are they just trying to get more money out of us? Apple already make profits out of the stuff they sell, like we've seen the uh, uh, with the iPad mini been dissected and stuff, and Apple make lo lots of money from that. They're pretty sure they make lots of money from this as well, but still, they are trying to still get more from us. You'd think that with uh, from that they'd uh, try you know, treating their customers or something, give them a free ad at least give them a free adapter. Because we never asked for a new adapter. The 30-pin dock connector, although it was quite long, it it did the job. It charged the device and uh, everything. We could still use our all, all our uh, accessories and stuff. But with a lightning connector, it's very expensive and it seems more like a scam than anything else. Another thing I did not really like was the indoor photos. Now, outdoor photos are great. I'll come back onto those later. Indoor photos, however, I think could be much better. Indoors photos, it's like when I'm actually taking a photo with a flash or something, it always leaves a shadow, and that shadow is not nice. Especially if you're taking uh, close-up macro shots and stuff, it leaves a shadow. So I think the timing could have been better as to when it takes the photo and when the flash fires. Another thing I don't like, and this is a big deal-breaker, not just for the iPhone 5, but also for other iOS devices, and that is lack of file support. Whenever you want to drag and drop your videos and media onto these devices, uh, onto these iOS devices, you're always going to have to do it through iTunes, and more often than not, you're going to have to convert the video files and and convert them to the specific format, mainly MP4. And if I have a lot of MKV video files and stuff, I normally drag and drop those into all those other I've, uh, Android devices I've been reviewing, and it works great. 80% of the time it works. With iOS, you have to convert it and find a... First, you've got to go out of your way to find a good converter that is uh, costs the right amount that you want to pay and also gives you good performance and stuff. And the converter sometimes have glitches, depending on how big the uh, uh, Blu-ray or video file is you're trying to convert. So, it's uh, been a hassle. I'm just going to say that it's been a hassle, and not a very gr enjoyable experience for viewing back media. That being said, media on the screen is very, very nice, but to view it back, I do not like viewing back media uh, on this if it means that I have to go through hell in order to actually put it on here. The next thing I don't like is iOS is very stale. Now, this is personal preference. I'm not going to say that this is uh, something that will apply to everyone. But in my opinion, I've been using iOS for a long time. I used to love it when it first came out for, the I think, about a year and a half to two years. I used to love it. Then it got boring. It looks basically the same apps. The f I, it looks exactly the same as it was the first day I got it, except now you've got wallpapers in the background. And it looks like you've got an extra row of icons on the iPhone 5. whoop de doo And not in a good way. Yeah, I would personally like more stuff to do than just, uh, you know, basically relying on apps every single time. They have given us the, uh, let's face it, Android notification bar. And they have come up with some good widgets right over here. And tapped a tweet over there. But who on earth uses stocks? They could give us some toggles and stuff. And I and this always feels very stiff to manage everything from here. So if I want to cross this notification off, you have to, I always have to go in a very tight corner in order to get it, and it seems like a hassle. Okay, so that's all the bad stuff out of the way. However, i just like to say that I would like more iPhone 5 optimized apps. As you can see, of all the apps I've got, these are the only ones that are optimized for the 4-inch screen. Okay, now it's not all bad, although I've been uh, going on about the bad stuff. But um, I'm going to cover the good stuff now, and one of the good things is the design. This is one sexy and really nice, high-quality looking mobile phone. It's got, a, it's got a very nice metal back, whereas before the iPhones were using stuff like glass and very durable pla uh, and uh, not too durable plastics. And uh, I'm, I'm glad they're using the metal at the back. People associate this with the uh, um, unibody designs on the HTC devices, which I can see why they do that. 
Another thing which I liked was that it charges very, very quickly. This lightning connector, although I did say some bad things about it earlier, it does charge the device surprisingly fast. I think I'm pretty sure in about 2 hours, 2 hours, 30 minutes you can get a full charge if you use this. So I really do like the battery charging times. And next thing I really like is call quality. Call quality incoming, spectacular. The best incoming call quality I've ever heard. No, There's no noise or anything in the background. All I hear is nothing but pure... Uh, clear voices from the people I'm actually calling. Even people that have older phones with uh, not as good and up-to-date microphones still came in very nice and clear. And speaking of microphones, you've actually got three microphones for phone calls. You've got one microphone over there, you've got one microphone over here, and you've also got another microphone at the back over here. This is for noise cancellation stuff, so the person that's actually that you're calling on the other end will actually hear you much clearer. And it does seem to work, as uh, people say I am coming in very, very clear. So the call quality is great. Next thing I really liked was the screen quality. Now the screen, although it's not the, it's also, although it's not as big as I would have liked it to be, it still looks very very nice. At first I thought this would just be the regular same Retina display, but it turns out that Apple have given it 40% saturation, so the colours do look more sharp, or more vivid, should I say? Is it the best screen on the market? No, it's not really the best screen in the market because there's a lot of 720p display mobile phones out there. But it still is one of the nicest displays, uh, one of the nicest displays you can find on a mobile phone. Another thing I liked was the speed. This is a very, very fast mobile phone. Web browsing on it is super, super fast. As you can see, it just loads Google up very fast right there. And uh, let's just go on to my website. Let's just tap it in there. It's taken me very fast to the uh, mobile website. Let's go to my full website version in the web version. Very, very fast. It's not a very intensive website, but as you can see, very, very fast. And you've got full screen web experience. Thank you, Apple. I always wanted a full screen web experience. When I was using Android, Android mobile phones, then I went to the iPhone. The experience seemed very, very off because uh, you, you don't have a full web browsing experience. They've given it to us now, you can say about 90%. Because as you can see, if you're on portrait mode, you don't get a full screen web, full screen web experience. You still get the notification bar and the uh, little dock at the bottom. And some websites, if you're in landscape, you won't be getting the full sorts of uh, web browsing experience like this. You still get some of the stuff showing. So that can be forgiven because it's only in a few of those websites. But web browsing experience is very, very good. Playing games and apps is very, very good. However, games are not optimized for the iPhone 5. Do tend to run very lag, uh, run very laggish. They seem to be very, very laggy. So little problem right there. And updates on the applications when they get updates and be optimized for the iPhone 5. Hopefully it will be uh, great and it will be working. And that, that is all great. I really do love the screen. Despite, I've, despite the fact I've seen better screens, the screen is still very nice. And outdoors it is very, very visible indeed. Next thing I do like is the camera. Now, even though I did say that it's not good for uh, close-up shots, if you're doing... Uh, if you're doing some uh, outdoor shots, the outdoor shots are outstanding, the best I've seen. Indoors, I'd say the Galaxy S3 perform performed much better. But for outdoors, the iPhone 5 really is the best. Now, this is one of the shots I did indoors of my 360 controller, and as you can see, nice amount of detail. I really do like the way it's uh, done detail over there. And all there is, and I did use the flash for this ca for this uh, picture right here, and there is some obvious flashback on these, but you can still see the uh, letters on here pretty much, except for that one, which is pretty much all faded out. And this might give you a good little example. As you can see, there's a shadow behind this controller. Not the best since it's a black controller, black shadow. But trust me, there is quite a bit of uh, fla uh, a bit, bit, quite a bit of a shadow over there. And that, and uh, the shadow tends to be bigger in other photos I've been doing with close-ups, and it does pretty much ruin the photo. But, like I said, outdoors is great, and as you can see, outdoors, it is beautiful. It is fantastic. I absolutely love this camera. I can't fault it at all uh, for outdoor photos. There's obviously better cameras for outdoor photos, but for a mobile phone, this performs absolutely amazing, as you can see. So, the camera for outdoors, absolutely brilliant. Especially, even HD video looks great on outdoors. Now, battery life. When Apple said the battery life was better in their keynote on the iPhone 5, I was not impressed whatsoever. I knew it was going to be better because they obviously have to make the battery life better because they're going to give you a better processor, bigger screen, and stuff like that. So obviously the battery life is going to be uh, bigger and probably a little bit better, but not by much because all previous generation of iPhones, particularly the iPhone 4S, had bad battery life and people were complaining about it. Well, looks like Apple have actually... You know, tried harder as battery life on this mobile phone is great. I'm easily, I'm always getting every a day, every single day, and if I'm really pushing it hard, I get just under a day. But that's if I that's if I really push it as hard as I can, and um, if I'm not if I'm using it casually as I would a normal mobile phone, I would get a day a day and a half. I would as well. So battery life on this, 
absolutely great. Really love the battery life on this mobile phone. Can't really fault it. So, all that is very, very good. I really love the design. As you can see over here, this front-facing camera is 1.9 megapixels, as I can remember, and it captures t uh, 720p HD video. One thing I will say is that Apple do seem to be catching up to the competition, rather than the competition catching up to Apple. As you can see, who came out first with the 1.9 megapixel camera with 720p HD video recording? It was the Samsung Galaxy Nexus. Apple do seem to be catching, up, catch, uh, yeah, trying to catch up, and as you can see, they took the notification bar from Android. But just because they take, they take uh, these features doesn't mean they know how to use it. As the, Android not as the Android notification bar is much more flexible in use. So, what do I think of the iPhone 5? Well, I think it's a very well-built phone. People are saying that they're coming in with some like damaged and faulty handsets, but hopefully uh, Apple are going to be resolving that uh, right now. So, yeah, it happened before. People are getting replacements and stuff like that, and hopefully it looks like we won't be going through these issues again. So, build quality is nice. The screen is really nice as well. And the it's a very, very fast phone iOS is uh, lacking and is quite boring and stale to me, but that's not to say that it's not everyone's uh, cup of tea. It's not for me, but it's for but many other people would love to have it. I noticed this has been a bit more of a longer review, but I hope you all enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Eric from ecartman12.blogspot.com. Please thumbs up, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see all of you in the next video.